Let me let you in on a little secret. Most gaming chairs are a complete waste of money. You can see on the GT racing chair, the backrest is completely flat. There's no natural curve in it to help support your spine in that natural angle. Your shoulders are gonna be protruding forward, locked in, so you can't really make much movement. It doesn't have a lot of flexibility. There's not a lot of adjustments that I can make to hold me in a neutral posture. For years, chair companies have been selling spine snapping, back breaking, neck nuking seats. They claim will keep you comfortable while gaming. And while these racing style chairs might look cool and come with tons of celebrity endorsements, the reality is they do very little to actually take care of your spine. Now, there are some companies trying to bring actual comfort to the masses, but even the bad chairs can be very expensive. So we had to ask, what is it that makes gaming chairs so bad? Are they really worth the money or is the entire industry just one big scam? Ew. <laughs> oh. All right, so before we start talking about gaming chairs and all the advantages they may or may not offer, I gotta do a quick merch plug. Head to shop.thescore.com and check out our new cream-colored touch grass hoodie. So for nearly two decades, the gaming industry has been dominated by so-called racing style chairs. Gaming chair companies have sponsored some of the biggest teams, players, and streamers in esports, but their chairs weren't originally designed for gamers. No, these chairs were designed to keep race car drivers stable in their cockpits. Because when you're driving at hundreds of kilometers per hour, the ride can get a little bumpy. Sonny, Sonny, you will wreck the car. We will not finish. The bucket seat design is intended to hug your thighs so you don't move around too much while driving. And the top of the chair pushes into your shoulders as you reach out and grip the steering wheel. It's pretty obvious that these chairs were designed for a very specific purpose. So how is it that they ended up underneath a bunch of sweaty nerds? Well, throughout the mid to late 2000s, the US car industry was in a rough spot. Oil prices were rising and sales plummeted for luxury cars and larger vehicles with poor fuel efficiency. These were tough times for car manufacturers, but they also sucked for those who made parts for those cars. This situation put luxury car seat company DX Racer in a bad spot. So in an effort to find a new way to make money, they added wheels to their chairs and marketed them to gamers. Gaming isn't a game, it's a tool. It's problem solving, it's creativity and overdrive. DX Racer enjoyed at every age, at every stage of our professions, of our games, of our lives. We know how the game is played. We play it every day in style, with attitude and intensity. That's why we're here. That's our mission. DX Racer, how you play the game. Over the past 15 plus years, with some help from off-brand Bradley Cooper, DX Racer have dominated the gaming space. For a long time, their chairs were being used at nearly every single esports event, with streamers and content creators all over the world repping their products. DX Racer got so big that they naturally inspired competition. Over the years, more companies like them cropped up, with their own gamer-oriented racing seats on offer. You couldn't get away from them if you wanted to. But eventually, many consumers realized that they made a mistake. They bought into the hype and bought a chair that looked cool, but wasn't exactly practical. See, these racing-inspired gaming chairs share one unique feature. They can fully recline. But aside from that, most of them only have three main adjustments you can make for your comfort. The ability to move the seat up and down, height adjustable armrests, and these cushions, which are supposed to act as lumbar support, but rarely stay in place, which can be super annoying. If that cushion slips out of place, the chair is basically a flat wall against your back which will ruin your posture and cause a lot of back pain. We spoke with Garrick Foreman, a PhD candidate at Brock University who specializes in neuromechanics and ergonomics to see just how much this can impact your long-term health. Here's what he had to say. When we sit, we start to go into uh, spinal flexion in the lumbars, and our lumbars are built to sustain pretty heavy loads and be fairly mobile. 
Um, but the discs between our vertebrae and our lumbars are not meant to be flexed. So once we start to move into spinal flexion, the contents of our intervertebral discs start to help break down those tissues that could lead to disc bulges and disc herniations and things like that. There is no doubt that it's important that we keep our spine from staying in flexion and having some kind of like a little lumbar pillow is better than nothing. But one of the biggest gripes that everyone has with racing style seats is that the leather or pleather materials that they use often produce a lot of heat, especially during those long gaming sessions. And if your job revolves around you sitting on your butt for most of the day, then some of these chairs can get pretty uncomfortable. Don't get me wrong, those racing chairs are really comfy. They're really well padded and you can sit in them for hours, but then once you get up, it's just like, oh, I can feel like in my back, all these sore spots of just like, where it's not supporting you enough. Which is why I like these office chairs now, because they actually you know, support your spine. I got to the point where every single time I'd get out of my chair, it hurts so much that I'm like, I just have to go lay down for a few hours because I just, I can't move. Racing chairs, they're just kind of like uncomfortable to sit in for a while. At least in my experience, like they're kind of like, it's kind of like a hard material. Um, like I'm not a big fan of like leather either, you know, like, yeah, it looks cool and, and stuff. And like, it feels cool at first, but then like, after a while, I was just like, I just like being comfortable, you know, I just like being like nice and cozy. So at this point, you're probably thinking, how bad could it be? After all, you're probably slouching in a crappy chair watching this right now. The thing is, bad chairs can have a negative long-term impact on your body. And if you don't believe me, well, for some reason, everybody trusts Colton more than they trust me, so I'll let him explain it to you. And now, the guy who actually knows what he's talking about. Let's face it, none of us is an expert on everything, myself included. Sometimes we just buy things because they look cool, or maybe it had really compelling advertisements, or somebody that we look up to bought one. And gaming chairs are no exception. You can rep your favorite team, or TV show, or maybe you just want to look and feel like the pros. But, like Dimitri said, some racing style gaming chairs don't exactly promote good posture. Since often things like the seat depth can't be adjusted, these chairs don't work for a lot of people. You typically only want about an inch of space where the edge of your chair meets your knees. Otherwise, you'll get bad blood circulation in your legs, which can cause soreness, swelling, and even blood clots in extreme cases. Obviously, you could just be a normal human being and take a break, get up, go for a walk, but some of us, well, some of us are capital G gamers. I know when I'm in the middle of a particularly fire video edit, I don't tend to leave my chair very much. So maybe you'd rather just reposition yourself instead, maybe cross your legs, get the blood flowing again. Well, unfortunately, this can just be uncomfortable in some racing style chairs because the sides of the seat push your legs inwards. It's just part of the design. But maybe you're okay with a little soreness. The only problem is that these chairs can actually start to do some more serious damage over prolonged periods of time. If you are sitting in a really bad position for your, your entire day, it's not a question of if, it's a question of when you're gonna get injured or be in pain. It's easy when you get into a rhythm doing something, either an assignment, a project, a paper, or playing games for a long period of time, you don't think to get up and loosen up and give your muscles some relaxation. If you play for hours and hours and hours, those muscles that are being strained from your bad posture, they get no relief, which means that their ability to withstand forces and prevent injuries goes down. Now, some gamer-focused chair brands have become much more cognizant of these issues and have pivoted to making their chairs much more ergonomic. Secret Lab, for example, ditched those awful lumbar cushions and replaced them with a system that's built directly into the chair, so you can actually adjust the height and depth of the support against your spine. But unfortunately, they must have added that right after I bought mine. Ultimately, the most ergonomic chair is the one that fits you best. And in that regard, just remember, not all thrones are a perfect fit for you kings and queens out there. And that was the guy who actually knows what he's talking about. So while racing style chairs have improved over the years, they're still not perfect. However, while the endemic gaming brands struggle to become more ergonomic, another company has become the gold standard, Herman Miller. They're best known for making some of the most comfortable and beloved office chairs in the world. And when they found out that gamers were already using their chairs, they saw an opportunity to create a product specifically oriented around gaming. The community pulled us into the space. 
Um, the community was asking for this. The community was already using our product before we ever entered into the like, entered into the gaming space. And when you start to understand, especially in the competitive side, what they were ultimately looking for, they were looking for a product that would fit them. They were being forced to sit on a stage and these were the elite level gamers in a product that didn't even adjust properly to fit their unique body types, which you see nowhere else in any traditional sport. It'd be like showing up to a professional track and field meet and making every runner run in a size eight shoe. Herman Miller and Logitech partnered to create a new version of the Embody Gaming Chair, which they claim solves most of the issues that plagued the competition for over a decade. To solve the heat problem, the Embody uses copper-infused foam to regulate body temperature. And for your back, Herman Miller's design helps your spine rest in a more natural S-shaped curve. No more straight-backed leather walls making you sore and sweaty. If you're watching this, you probably already know that Herman Miller chairs are the gold standard. You probably also don't own one because, boy, are they expensive. The Embody is over $1,500, and an Aeron is gonna run you over $1,700. These are premium products, and they're priced accordingly. And while you can find refurbished classic Aerons all over the place, they're still surprisingly expensive. Most people just don't have that kind of money to spend on a chair. But that doesn't mean that your back is screwed. Companies like Steelcase, Hayworth, and Autonomous have solid ergo office chairs that are sometimes cheaper. Hell, you could probably pick up a simple Amazon Basics office chair and still find something that's better for your back than a racing chair. And for only about $100. It might not be a fancy chair, but it'll treat your spine a hell of a lot better than some of the more expensive options. But no matter how much money you spend, there is still a chance that a chair could feel comfortable for one person, but not another. Just like your mouse, keyboard, or monitor, finding the right chair can be difficult. There's no one-size-fits-all option that applies to everyone. And that's something that even Herman Miller can admit. I think customers are smart enough nowadays where they realize what, what's going on. What you're seeing today is simply product placement on the stage, which is the model that the current industry operates under. The model that we actually are pushing right now within publishers is that every player can choose what chair they bring on stage. Today, they choose their mouse and their keyboard that is not dictated by a brand. I believe the right path forward is not a Herman Miller only path forward, but it is the right chair for the player. Gamers have come a long way from people sitting on dining chairs and, you know, the floor, but there's definitely still some work to be done. However, there is no doubt that the industry is moving in the right direction. So long as you're not buying a straight-backed bucket seat with no lumbar support, you're not getting scammed. And hopefully soon, everyone will be able to find a chair that is both affordable and right for them. I never bought into the racing chair hype, whatever. I never, I never made the mistake of buying one, but I know a lot of people who did and they hate them so much. I remember I sat in like Dennis's for a brief time. It got so warm. It just felt like you'd sit in it for like 30 minutes and you'd just be like, why is it so hot? Like, this is so crazy.